All right, welcome back to the Public Affairs Show. Of course, uh, today we want to talk about a very critical topic, and that is about the diaspora and investing in the diaspora and what our relations are and what is being done as well. There's a conference scheduled for this week uh, for investment where all counties will be represented there as well, as well as you will be invited. We want to get to know what, will, what the tenants of that conference and the tenants of diaspora relations and what it means in terms of investing um, in that regard. And so we will have Dr. Shemo Cholo, who is the Global Chairman of the Kenya Diaspora Alliance. Uh, he's joining uh, joining engineer Peter Maina, who is the CEO of Geonet, it's in USA and Kenya, and we're talking about basically the diaspora basket. What are your thoughts, your views, your comments, and your suggestions are the same? We invite them. The SMS, the SMS number remains 2242. That number again, 2242. Ask, ask your questions, send in your views, send in your comments, and let's keep talking on the same. And also on Twitter, the hashtag to use is Power Breakfast. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. But we, are, we, we know you, uh, Dr. Shodo, as a as a local person, <laughs> uh, I know you as a ninety person. What have you got to do in diaspora? Uh, uh, for the past ten, twelve years, yeah. actually, I've been more uh, an outsider than a Kenyan. I've been more. I've been working for the government of Rwanda uh, for four years, one year for the government of Ethiopia, and now seven years for the government of South Sudan. So, combined twelve years and. Uh, but we have a very liberal definition of diaspora. By diaspora, we mean Kenyans who are ordinarily resident outside Kenya, but also returnees. Kenyans who have been outside but have since come back home, as well as those of mixed families. A Kenyan married to a Rwandese or to a, a Polish, as well as aliens in our country. And finally, we have corporate that are doing business, companies owned by Kenyans, like Jonas Safaris in the U.S., but doing business outside Kenya. So that's the bouquet that we call diaspora. So what, do you, what, what is the Kenyan Diaspora Alliance? Kenya Diaspora Alliance, some call us umbrella body, but we prefer to call ourselves a federation. We are a membership organization, 36 organizations affiliated to the alliance. We are always quick to say we're really not an organization per se, but we are a federation. We bring together 36 organizations with 250,000 estimated members across the globe. So that's the Kenya Diaspora Alliance. One of those 36 is purely for business and investment. That's the Diaspora Investment Club. So that's our business arm. So what do you bring to you here, Vanamina? Uh, the, he mentioned the uh, diaspora, diaspora Investment Club and uh, Geonet Communication, which is a diaspora telecom company in, a, uh, in the U.S., uh, is, uh, has an, an MOU, an agreement to work together with the Diaspora Investment Club in investing in this country. Um, what we did was, we are solution finders, we're in telecom. Uh, if you have been to America, you've seen some calling cards. Mm -hmm. And uh, those calling cards are known for taking people's money. And we decided, we as Diaspora, we can solve it. We can solve that problem and we created our own telecommunication company. We got licensed by the Federal Communication Commission of America and then came back home here and got licensed by uh, Communication Authority of Kenya. And uh, we realized, we, we, instead of this money is going that we buy cards and, 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 and subscribe to companies that tel deliver calls to Kenya for us, instead of all that money remaining in, for in foreign hands, we can deliver that money back home. We can come and in build infrastructure. So that's what we are doing here. And um, we have satellite technology that we are launching and that is able to connect even the, the most remote schools in this country will be able to have as much bandwidth as you have in your 4G. And this is ready to roll in Kenya. All diaspora owned, but on their hand, we are really kind of doing technology transfer because we are hiring Kenyans. Or if you come to uh, you look at our workforce, Kenya has very good people who can do this work, but they need a little bit of input from us who are there. So diaspora is a great resource for capacity building in this country. Just coming back, even in a few months, and working with our fellow Kenyans, we just build capacity. So, so your company is actually not here now? We're here. We are, we are, we are licensed by <laughs> Communication Authority. Right. We're just launching satellite uh, communication, and we created um, a, a very good competitor, WhatsApp, Viber, and Emo. Doing the same thing Viber does, uh, WhatsApp does, texting, uh, calling, but 
you don't have to have internet to receive a call from our system. Mm -hmm. And that is a mobile app available on Play Store and uh, uh, iTunes, I, I, Apple Store, that is created what by is Kenyans. Greek? What you're saying is talking is Greek. as much as you want for free or almost free basically this is a technology peter is saying we're going to provide our own platform yeah something almost kenya is known for mpesa innovation yeah. mm -hmm. but this is going to be even much more than that yes i should say during the convention we have this week which will will have our chief guest as dr mukisa kitui anchored secretary general among our keynote speakers, United Nations uh, in Conference of Trade and, Trade and Development. Yeah, and that, yeah. That's right. As well as our key guests, we have uh, the Chief Hon Chief Justice, Dr. Mutunga, the Right Honorable Speaker of the Senate, as well as Dr. Manu Chandaria, and other eminent Kenyans, like CEO of the Kenya Investment Authority, Dr. Ikiara, Professor Wainaina, the CEO of Vision 2030, and we also have eminent speakers from Europe, from Switzerland, from the US, and from other parts of the world. And one of the things that we will be doing will be launch some products, and we are working with partners. So one of the products we'll be launching is a diaspora database, where you can easily, if you want to know who are the Kenyans in Fiji Islands, you can easily access them. But we are also working with corporate partners like ICA Lion, even Kenya Revenue Authority, the Commissioner General will one of be one of our key note speakers, how do we tap diaspora to pay tax in a way that's convenient to them so that they participate in building our country. What, what, what are you doing about the conference? Uh, pretty much uh, the, our, our participation in there is really kind of uh, one of the sponsors, uh, sponsoring part of it. And um, the thing we want to hammer home is that we are the answers that we seek for this, for this country. We are the solution. We don't have to look out there for solution. Mm -hmm. Like we have come up with a with a product called GeoPesa that is going to allow diaspora to send money free. There's one Geo called Pesa. Yes. There's one called um, called uh, Sendwave that is doing that. But we are combining GeoSafari and GeoPesa. They are all sending money to Kenya free. And our mobile app is enabling Kenyans to call free. Just if you have mobile Geo Safari, he has Geo Safari. He's in Sudan. You are in UK. You're talking free. Okay. We we found we don't have to be really spending our money uh, investing in foreign technologies, which we can come adopt, bring them home, grow them here, and price them at our economic level that people can afford. What is the contribution of gas to our economy as Quite of now? Quite huge, actually. In terms, actually, of, yeah, actually, in terms of, yeah. According to the Central Bank of Kenya, it's $1.4 billion every year. The World Bank puts it double that. says for every dollar coming through commercial means, there are money is coming through non-official non means. Say somebody has walked in with a, a little few dollars in the wallet and so on. So they estimate that we raise $2 billion every year. That's 200 billion Kenya shillings every year. And that's 10% of our annual budget. So basically this is huge. In fact, uh, we've made an official offer. We've written to government and said if government is prepared to work with the diaspora organizations. And so far we are getting very positive responses. The president has said wherever it's gone to meet diaspora that you are my 40th country, you are my richest country, my government cannot ignore you. So we are leveraging on that and we've indicated to government if we can come up with certain incentives within the next three to five years, we want to double this two billion dollars to four or five billion dollars every year. Yeah. And we think it's still doable because Filipinos, there are 10 million Filipinos, di Filipino diaspora, mm. and they're meeting to Filip Philippines, are hooping 40 billion dollars every year. Mm. We are three million Kenyans outside the country estimated. 
if you prorate, mm -hmm. ideally we should be remitting 10 to 12 billion dollars yeah. every year. Yeah. But we are not even being that ambitious yet. Yeah. We are saying, let's improve the environment, let Kenyans outside the country feel as much as part of the country mm -hmm. as our brothers and sisters back here, and then we work towards securing their investments, and then we, in the next three years, see doubling of that two billion dollars. If it gets to five billion dollars a year, then we are talking of a half a trillion shillings. So almost a quarter of our budget, theoretically speaking, could be financed by diaspora. And this is hard currency. So and, and we have we have like ten areas we have identified mm -hmm. that you know in, in this country in, we working with the government and other private uh, entities. Uh, we found we can work with the government investing in roads roads, bridges. Which means what? The public, uh, pub, 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 public PPP. Yeah, PPP. It's, it's already uh, with God uh, for the country's uh, for the uh, administration. They enacted an act to enable that mm -hmm. or to operationalize that. Sure. Yeah. But we, are, we have identified key areas like uh, water harvesting, you know, and wood ge energy generation. Even in forest, sure. even in wildlife and tourism, we have so all these areas we realize, oh, diaspora, if the government target their investment the right way can be a big part of this country. What would you like the government to do? Uh, pretty much they, they carry out the law that is on, on, on paper now. <laughs> uh, actually, uh, Kenya is blessed with a lot of good laws if they could be implemented. Sure. Just the government need to be, I think they have the efficiency unit. They need to work to make that unit little operational. Maybe the president should bring it closer to himself, such that they are really looking into operationalizing what the diaspora is trying to bring into the country. In that convention of yours, haven't had you talk about people in the government? Or you have only talked about uh, the, 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 the parliament, the judiciary. What about the executive? I thought I did, uh, Mutegi, because uh, the Kenya Investment Authority, because our oh, Kenya, Kenya Investment Authority. Yes, the CEO yeah. will be yeah. there, and okay. I mentioned Vision 2030, and yeah. I mentioned the Kenya Revenue Authority, the Commissioner General. These are part uh, of the executives. But I should add that we are not only dealing at the national level, we also have four confirmed governors, governor. governors of Machakos, uh, Migori, Uasin Gishu, and Deputy Governor of Nairobi. So we are also looking at the executive in the devolved system. Maybe at that point I could also mention our six thematic areas mm. which will be addressed during the conference. The first one is diaspora investments in the 47 countries. Yes. So that's purely that's our major theme. The next one is the PPP, but we add a fourth P, mm -hmm. public-private people's partnerships, because we recognize there are things that government cannot do on its own, yeah. neither can private sector. But you also need those both, as well as uh, institutions like the diaspora, like professionals, like SMEs, the small to medium enterprises, so that's holistic. So, and that's a major area. And especially as he's mentioning about the, 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 the fourth P, the people. Mm -hmm. right. uh, we came up with a definition of what we would like to see is uh, a very democratic, um, uh, equitable economic development that really involves people. This is this is not new to Kenyan. This is what Harambe was about. Right, yeah. You know, Harambe meant all hair, hands on deck. If you want to build a school, you build together. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's just getting people focused again right. to say we are the solutions that we seek. It is in our hands. We can do it. Sure. Okay. Actually, along that, yeah. at national level, again, one of our speakers is the Director General of LAPSET, the mm -hmm. Lamu Port, South yes, Sudan, yes, Ethiopia yes. Transport mm -hmm. Corridor Authority. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Again, in that regard, we do believe that uh, diaspora have a role to play. Even if not directly, they have access to foreign direct investors because they live with these people daily. Mm -hmm. uh, but at a local level, we are talking to the Turkana County government. We have a, a solar energy project that we are passing solar and water in Turkana County. We hope through a PPP framework we can get that uh, rolling. We have already identified investors for that. The third area that we are working on, the thematic area, is youth, women, disabled, empowerment, entrepreneurship, and employment. We call it three E's, empowerment, entrepreneurship, and employment. Mm -hmm. And in this regard, we are keen to look at how do we get jobs for young people. So a number of people, we're expecting at least 300 people to attend, about half of them are diasporas. The other half may be young people who would want to see opportunity, how do we work with them to create jobs through creative art, music sector, sport, and other areas as well, small enterprises. So we will be talking to experts on this. 
The fourth area that we will be looking at is knowledge, talent, skill management, and uh, innovation. Again, this is where things like um, um, uh, uh, Geo Safari that Peter talked about. We have other products. We have, for example, MVote or MCURA, mobile voting. Our premise is, uh, which also is already available on Google Apps. Why does one need to skew a whole day to vote, which you can do even from the comfort of your bed uh -huh. in two minutes? Yep. So, and often people ask us, this technology you're trying to introduce in Kenya, where else have, has it been used? We normally answer with a question. Before Kenya did mobile money, where else was it done? Our mm -hmm. premise is that Kenya is the, the frontier mm -hmm. for mobile technologies. Yeah. So we hope that the next big thing is going to be this mobile voting. Uh, so we will initially be exploring it for, say, university student votes, uh, the less contentious voting. The fifth uh, area will be also looking at the aspect of uh, the implementation of the diaspora policy that government, the president, did launch in February this year, as well as what's our input to the WTO process. So next week we have WTO. We also want our voices to be heard because when we are talking of trade in services, trade in goods and products, we also have a role because some of our members are doing business outside the country. So these are some of the areas we are going to address during the convention. But having lived in America, I don't know how many years, what are the things that bar diaspora Kenyans to invest here? What, what entrances are there? The confidence is sometimes is lost when, especially you trust relatives or very close friends, and uh, you send in money and you're deceived. That's a common thing. And that's actually why we are believing that um, if the government help channel those investment in accredited project, that we can be able to follow their, the progress of those projects, that will increase the confidence uh, for people remitting their few dollars into this country. Um, the other thing is, there are those people in the diaspora, uh, I'm almost there 30 years, I almost lived more outside this country than in the country. Um, uh, the people out there, would, there are people who can't travel, you know, for various reasons, like in the U.S., for, they are, not, they are out of status. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. And they want to know that the person they are sending that money to, because they can't come to see it, is credible. Mm -hmm. And that's where actually the government comes in. We really want to see the government really tell those people, okay, we know you're waiting for your papers, you still can be able to make money through this various project that we have, we have, we have going on here. Okay. You, you talked about voting. Yeah. Right. You, and, uh, technology, through what you can vote. Yes, by more by texting. Yeah. Uh, actually, I, I'm glad you raised that. Yeah. Maybe I could just add, if you mm. permit, yeah. in terms of what can government do mm. to get the diaspora to have more remittances, for example, into the country or invest more. Uh, apart from securing our investments uh, by, for example, obeying the rule of law, uh, as Peter has elaborated, we, there, there are instances we could borrow from what other countries are doing. In India, they have a whole ministry of diaspora, uh, separate from foreign affairs, and the same in Nigeria, the same in Georgia, because those countries recognize the import of this sector. Uh, we, we've made that recommendation that uh, let's elevate diaspora, if not to a whole ministry level, maybe restructuring foreign affairs to be foreign and diaspora affairs. Uh, apart from that, there could be other incentives. Ethiopia, for example, gives 70% uh, uh, loan guarantee, commercial loan. If diaspora wants to come and build, then the commercial bank government guarantees a way of encouraging them to bring in more yeah. investments. Yeah. In the case of Mexico and Philippines, um, Western Union has a program called One by Four, which we are talking to them with a view of fully to introduce in Kenya. For every dollar, if a Kenyan in Toronto coming from Taveta County wants to invest one dollar, every dollar he puts in, the local government also puts in a dollar. I think Muranga County was talking of shilingi kwa shilingi, something mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. In addition, the federal government, or in our case, the national government, also puts in another dollar. And then the company involved, in this case, Western Union, but could be other companies, also put in a dollar. That's why they call it one by four. The idea is if somebody was to send $1,000 to Taita Taveta, which automatically becomes $4,000, mm -hmm. there's incentive to even double it. Yes. Other things government can do, government could say, we provide land, land mm -hmm. say work with mm -hmm. Kenyatta University, mm -hmm. 10 acres of land, come and build, and build hostels on a BOT, build, operate, transfer basis. Yeah. After 15 years, 20 years, transfer them to the university, student hostels, mm -hmm. you've solved the problem, mm -hmm. you've made some little money and it's secured investment.
So those are some of the incentives we are proposing to both levels of government to consider. Finally, in terms of voting, voting yes. one of the thematic areas, the last one I didn't mention, is governance, diaspora representation and voting in 2017. Diaspora has been into courts, uh, not willfully, but just to claim their right to be able to vote. And Supreme Court in May this year did rule diaspora should vote for all positions, from president to MP. Okay, so we're looking, we're working with IBC to get that implemented. But um, we recognize that diaspora being so widely spread everywhere globally, it may be very difficult to get them all to vote without technology. This is why we are proposing that. It may not happen next in the 2017 election, but we, are, we have started piloting. In future, if this technology is proven to work, uh, then this could be a way of, regardless of wherever diaspora is, as long as they have registered, it's validated their passports or whatever other means uh, of identification they have. The law says you can vote with an ID or a passport. Then they could easily vote. Finally, I may just mention that Estonia is one country that has been doing electronic voting. When they first introduced electronic voting, people had an option. They could either use electronic or go the normal. Five percent of the voters went to electronic voting. After five years, the next cycle, 27% went for electronic voting. So you could see the gradual growth. I'm sure the next electoral cycle, it will be probably 40 or 50%. So people are increasingly moving more towards technology. I know in the case of Kenya, technology has been contentious yeah. during the last elections. Yeah. But that was more due to other reasons <coughs> other, than, other than technology itself. But again, even for the banking sector, Personally, I've been involved in pushing computer technology, not just in this country, but in the region. In the earlier years, I remember when it was even government policy to resist computers, that computers were going to take away jobs. Yeah. But now you know banks <laughs> and even media houses cannot uh, operate uh, with computers. Uh, yeah. So without, that's, that's the direction we are trying to encourage. Yeah. That ultimately there are challenges, but in the end, this is the only practical way. So, but of course, we are also alive to issues that are facing Kenya, like impunity, like corruption, yep. like Ukabila. So these are some of the issues we'll also be talking about. We also have ways we are suggesting that this can be, uh, can be stemmed so that Kenya can make the next big leap. The, 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 the proposed law, right. which is being proposed by the electoral commission, says you put personally. Right. That's not computer. Yeah, there are many ways that, and again... Personal means what? You, 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 go to a, you, you can go to a computer <laughs> or to uh, an, 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 an a computer interface <laughs> <laughs> and vote there right on the screen. Yeah, there, there are actually yeah. many other best practices we can learn. And again, mm. this is where diaspora brings in other skills. Mm. How are people voting in the UK? Some vote, uh, there is what they call external voting. People vote by post. Australia, they do the same. Mm -hmm. yeah, in the sure. U.S., some yeah. people do both post Water. as well as online. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But we even want to go a step further. We have a product called iVote, which is already live uh, for those who have access to internet. www.i-vote.net, which is live. It's got a database for diaspora, and the next part of it is allows diaspora to vote through the internet. Our intention is to have three ways to vote. Those who want to go to the polling center to vote the traditional way would be able to do it. They go maybe to the embassies or other designated areas. Those who want to vote on the internet can also do it. But we are alive to the fact that other than maybe our brothers and sisters in the developed parts of the world, our, our, our brothers and sisters in what we may sometimes call Dongata Rongai diaspora, in Uganda, in Tanzania, in South Sudan, like where I am and so on, not everyone has access to internet, but almost everybody has a phone. Mm -hmm. And this is why we are talking of M-Vote, yeah. yes. with the mobile mm -hmm. phone. Mm -hmm. So one can vote either physically or online on the internet or with the mobile phone. But the systems will be integrated in such a way that once you've voted with one, if you go to do the other, it automatically rejects. Again, I, I'm under no illusion there will be no initial challenges. But we have seen these challenges when banks were introducing computers. Ultimately, you improve on them and yeah. they're perfect. And with IT, those are the challenges that, that, that kind of fuel innovation. You, you learn how to keep overcoming these challenges. You learn how to do your code better. Right. You know, we, we, uh, we are used to doing e-commerce. And we've had 
people trying to hack our system from all over the world. Right. But they, when they try once, we figure out and we're able to seal that loophole. That's how you innovate in IT. Without, it's just like a muscle. Without exercising it, you never really grow. Your muscles will not grow. The same thing with IT. If people don't challenge your, your network setup, you will not figure out where the loopholes are. Yeah. <laughs> so we have to move forward with saying computers can be used in voting, in actually helping this country overcome the, the plague of That's corruption. That's right. Correct. Especially but, in procurement. And I should add, uh, Tegi, that uh, in terms of private sector participation, actually we're also working together with KEPSA, Ambassador mm -hmm. Denis Awuri will mm -hmm. be one of our guest speakers. Mm -hmm. In fact, we, he will be even chairing what we call the Ambassador's Panel, where we have a few current and former ambassadors, just to look at. The ambassadors are like the first rate or first level diaspora, because by their definition, they are diaspora. We want to know what are their findings in engaging with the diaspora, wherever they are. We also, in addition, plan to recognize one Kenyan because the con convention ends on the 11th, which will be the eve of Jamuri Day. We will be recognize a hero, a Kenyan hero, heroine, that we feel an all-time hero, heroine, in the real sense, from the perspective of the diaspora, who has made significant contribution to change the livelihood of the Kenyan people. We, w we have been recently working with Royal Media and the Cosmopolitan Media in the Governor's Award. Mm -hmm. We um, were participating in the, one of the pillars was the diaspora participation or involvement in the county governments. We are looking at initiating a similar program, the Ambassadors Award. Which mm -hmm. of the ambassadors are handling mm -hmm. our people and our interests in the countries where they are yeah. Yeah. best, particularly the economic mm -hmm. interests. We, so these are some of the things that we are looking at. We also will have the chairman of the Chamber of Commerce. Uh, we are actually working on MOUs to collaborate both with KEPSA and the Chamber. As a matter of fact, we expect to sign also some deals during this convention. We are talking to uh, Alexander Forbes to look at the possibility of initiating a diaspora pension scheme or savings plan, as some call it, together with the Revenue Benefits Authority, whose CEO is also one of our confirmed uh, speakers, guest speakers. But we will also be looking at an MOU uh, to be a super agency for ICA Lion, and we are working with other organizations. This is an exclusive. We are also looking at working together with the uh, uh, Commercial Bank of Africa, which is one of our partners in this program. So there are, we are trying to bring private sector together, government, and also diaspora for the betterment, for Kenya to make the next big break. Yeah. How long has this the diaspora uh, uh, position been there? Um, about five years. The Kenya Diaspora Alliance is five years old. The Diaspora Investment Club is three years old. Actually, we are already doing biz prog programs. Uh, we are a startup, as you'd, think, you'd expect, three years is not a long time. No. But we're already doing $4 million of businesses in the real estate sector, in the stock brokerage market. We've just recently acquired uh, a stock brokerage agency. We are also working in what we call the tech innovation area, like the mobile apps we have talked about. Finally, we're also working in consultancy sector. In the area of consultancy, we do it at, at two levels. If there is a consultancy project, uh, then the diaspora bid like everybody else, and then we have experts. Whichever field you can mention, we'll get them. And then if they win, they, they participate and get a compensation. Part of it goes to the club. But also we are looking at bringing in foreign direct investors. I'm, I'm happy to say initially we're focusing on six East African countries, not just Kenya, but Kenya, uh, DRC, Uganda, Rwanda, South Sudan, and Ethiopia. And we already have two companies, one willing to invest about a billion dollars in South Sudan, and another willing to invest 1.5 billion dollars in the Lapset project. So this is part of one of the things we are discussing. Yeah. So those are areas in which that's a consultancy element that we think, because we have people in Germany who work with the EU, people in Brussels, uh, we have the EU representative as one of our members. So they have access to these investors, whether in Japan, Tokyo, or in any other part of the world and we and they understand the terrain here some foreign direct investors want to come in but they don't understand this terrain so we hope we can work together with them like we're already doing with yeah. geonet usa mm -hmm. and mostly actually yeah. for most of the um the people who are foreign to africa uh, they have a lot of you know kind of fear apprehension to come to africa on their own so if they are my neighbors right uh, 
then they know this is Peter and we have been living with him here for so many years. They can come with a lot of money. Right. And that's, that's exactly what uh, the, uh, DISCL is doing. Trying to get the diaspora, bring their friends, their neighbors, people who want to invest in Africa, give them confidence that that there, there is not, nothing, nothing to fear <laughs> in Africa. <laughs> so, well, you, 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 your company, your yeah. unit, yes. you said it's, it's available on... Uh, sure. Yeah, Play Store, uh, Google Play Store, App Store, you can download there. And... Um, well, free? It's free. Yeah, sure. And it's for the calls between um, people who have it, uh, it's free. Whatever you, whether you're calling your na next door neighbor or calling across the, the, the seas. How will people know you that we're there? Uh, because because we are <laughs> many people like me, we are hearing for the first time now. Yes. How do people know you, you exist? Yes, we, we, we're going to be marketing aggressively. Uh, uh, we've been trying to, we have had uh, kind of um, several failed attempts to, to take off in Kenya, but now we are poised to, to really get ourselves established and take off in this country. Why fail? And we are doing a lot of uh, the failures. Mm -hmm. Mostly is, uh, you have. Uh, laws in the books that uh, civil servants don't want to implement and they'll tell oh, you right. invest in this thing this is what the law says oh yeah the law says that and when when you try to do it no you can't do that so eventually is, is we are corruption or bureaucracy? it's corruption of the law but not uh, no uh, this is a corruption of the rule of law right but not necessarily somebody taking I'm money sure. but that's what really spawns the request for something under the table those yeah. are things, those yeah. are delays and wastage of time and resources that have been pulling this company, back, this country backward. It's like we want to move forward, but it's like a cord pulling you back. Yeah. So, um, uh, I remember when mobile phone came, <laughs> came here, there was waiting for to buy a mobile phone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was, yeah. Ugandans are more mobile phone than, than, than Kenyans. I'm telling yeah. you, I remember those days yeah. because yeah. as a member of the Communications Committee of Parliament at the time, yeah. we recall it was a quarter million shillings yeah. to have a mobile, a mobile phone. phone yes, uh, yeah. And I'm happy we came up with the law, the Communications Law 1998, mm -hmm. which are what basically we are asking for, maybe not new laws but implementation of the oh, existing yeah. law. Yes. So the rule of law is yes. a major issue. Yes. Part of why as Kenya Diaspora Alliance, KDA, we are keen on what GeoNet is doing is making it affordable to call. Yeah. And I'm, I'm, I'm happy to mention, uh, wearing another hat, that as part of the team that has been working on the Northern Corridor projects, one of the major wins, not just for Kenya, but the four countries, um, Kenya, Uganda, Rwanda and South Sudan is the one area network. The one network area does allow or honor as it's called. Whether I, when I'm in Nairobi I use my Juba number and it costs the same. The same when you go to Kampala or Kigali. For now the AU is some members, some, some of the uh, leaders within the African Union are talking of OAN. The initial one was one network area but now they're talking of one Africa network, OAM, so that as long as you're in Africa, whether you're in Namibia or Zimbabwe or Kenya, you could call us if you're making a local call. Yeah. And the four Afri East African countries have made this possible. Now, this is the same thing we are trying to take a step ahead with GeoNet. Instead of paying four, five shillings a minute to call the United States, yeah. they are promising to make it one shilling, mm -hmm. really make it affordable yeah. so that Kenyans with relatives or businesses or acquaintances or friends outside the country can have affordable communication. And you can do that not for one-time promotion throughout. Right. That you can have hours and hours to talk to your grandkids right. uh, or they can call you and that's what we're trying to do. We, we realize that people out there want to stay connected to home even when they can oh, come yeah. right. to be in person and then we want to solve that. Thank you very much, Dr. Well, thank, thank you, thank you so much, much for this opportunity. Much. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah, and yes. we now go to the musicians and then we'll be talking about uh, Maasai uh, athletics. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you.